Do you want a tornado? <laughs> yeah. So do I. Let's tornado. <laughs> We're making an indoor tornado. <laughs> Hey, welcome and welcome, hey, to Destructive Creativity. But first, make sure you subscribe and like this video. Otherwise, we're not going to let you watch the bloopers at the end. <laughs> Don't worry, we can't stop you. Let's get on with the show. Yes, I can. <laughs> so my original idea for this video was I wanted to make an indoor tornado. So naturally, what I did is I got a 200-pound four foot industrial fan and then suspended at nine feet above the air. Threw a bunch of dry ice underneath it and played around until I got a tornado. And it actually worked. It was really cool and if you want to take a look at that video, there is a link to it. I'll put it somewhere either in the description or over there. The large tornado I made was highly inconsistent and we just couldn't make it work for long term. So that's why I'm making this video. I want to make a tornado that is easily reproduced and works consistently. Fluid dynamics are really hard. And I'm pretty sure it hates me. Just a hunch, but I'm pretty sure. So we decided to shrink it down a little bit so that we could control each aspect a little bit better. Plus, this has the added benefit of really bad jokes. Fun fact of the day, I tried to get tornado insurance on my campsite. You know what they said? <laughs> what? They said, no, if your tent blows away, you're not covered. Right. Anyways, why don't we tell them how we're going to do this? Sure. So the first thing that we did was we got rid of the fan entirely. Yeah, so instead we'll be using a small hot plate and boiling water to heat up the air. That's right. This is taking too long. We need to add more ice. <laughs> oh. That's cool. Make sure you always exercise caution when handling anything hot or really cold, like dry ice. Always use gloves and parental supervision when you're heating anything up like this. Just so everyone knows, we're using the dry ice just as a tracer so you can see the tornado. That's right. The vortex will form with or without the dry ice. It just helps us see it better. So now all that's missing is the vortex shape from this boiling water. That's where this beauty comes in. Right there. We made this tornado in a box contraption out of foam board we got at a dollar store and plexiglass from uh, the hardware store. The most important part of this entire contraption are these slits right here in the corners. As the warm air rises, it draws in the cooler air from these slits, creating the beginning of the tornado shape. But we will talk about that later. For now, let's change up the studio a little bit so that we can see the tornado a little bit better. One more fact of the day. Hey, Eliana, did you know that shellfish are attracted to tornadoes? Yeah, they are. Locals watch them to know when the tornadoes are coming. They call it the clam before the storm. So we have darkened the studio, we've put black sheets up all over so we can see the tornado a little bit better. And we are ready to make this tornado with the tracer dry ice.
this tornado going for a little bit. Eliana, would you mind telling them what is happening here? All right, with pleasure. Let me preface this by saying that the study of fluid dynamics is very advanced, and we can't pretend to understand it completely. But I'll try to ex and explain a simplified version of what is happening here. The warm air that is rising is creating a low pressure zone that is filled by cooler air being drawn into these slits on the corner of the box. Because the air is being drawn through these slits at relatively high speeds, the movement of the air is creating low pressure zones inside each individual stream. These in turn interact with each other and slowly shrink the area of lowest pressure to the center of the box. The size of the vortex is determined by the speed at which the warm air rises. Well, thanks for that, Eliana. Obviously, that's a simplified version, but that's great. We've got new videos coming out weekly, so be sure to subscribe. And stay tuned, because we've got bloopers coming up. I'm sure patch all those together. <laughs> I'll be fine! <laughs> okay, yeah. Let's try that. <laughs> no, stop it. Ah. Just do it again. <laughs> never boil it. But I tricked physics by using a pan. Sometimes you have to be smarter than physics. It doesn't smell like anything. No wonder the cool kids vape. <coughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> oh! oh! <laughs> it caught me! The battery bit me! <laughs> Pretty sure a little thing jumped out and bit me. <laughs> oh. Great, now I have a grudge match with fluid dynamics and electricity. Recording. <laughs> Not cheating! Not cheating! <laughs> I'll be fine! <laughs>